throughout the Second World War, there were many executions carried out by the German army of those who rose up and resisted the occupation. Inside of many different towns and cities, partisans and resistors would work behind enemy lines to commit acts of resistance such as sabotage, disruption and even at times slaughter and murder. The German army did not discriminate with who they would sentence to death, as throughout the conflict there were many teenagers who were condemned for their crimes. For example, Lepo Radic, a young girl of just 17, was for firing at the Wehrmacht, taken into a town square where she was executed in front of a crowd for refusing to give over information to her enemies about partisan activities. But there are other accounts of young people meeting their end during the conflict, as German executioners would condemn them. One young woman, who was also 17 when she was executed, was Iro Konstantopoulou, a Greek girl who had opposed the Axis occupation of her nation for years, before she was subjected to a harrowing ordeal. Join us today as we look at the ruthless execution of the teenage girl shot by the Germans, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Iro Konstantopoulou was born on the 16th of July 1927 in Athens in Greece, and her family were rather wealthy. It's assumed that she had a rather normal upbringing inside of the Greek capital, but when she was just 13 years old, the German army invaded Greece, and this would begin a three and a half year brutal occupation, which left thousands of people dead. Iro, like a number of young Greeks, joined the United Panhellenic Organization of Youth, a Greek resistance movement, and inside of this she was tasked with obtaining messages from German forces and also in keeping an eye on the movement of German soldiers. This it was hoped would then be passed on to other resistance groups who would carry out acts of sabotage and attacks upon the groups of Germans. The Axis invasion of the Kingdom of Greece began in April 1941 to help the Italian forces who had been at war with Greece since October 1940. After the conquest of Crete, the occupation began and it would last until October 1944 when Allied pressure forced the Germans and other forces to retreat, but some islands were controlled until the end of the conflict in Europe. The Hellenic army had pushed the Italians back and the Nazis intervened on its allies' behalf and a rapid blitzkrieg occurred from April to June 1941 which resulted in the Greeks being defeated and the occupation then began. The land was divided between occupation zones split between Axis forces and new governments, which had been brought in. The occupation would bring in a lot of hardships and problems for the Greek people, and a lot of economic infrastructure in the land was destroyed, and there was a huge hit in many different areas, resulting in around 7-11% to of the entire Greek civilian population dying. In Athens, where Iro lived, with her family, 40,000 civilians succumbed to starvation, and thousands more died from reprisals, carried out by German forces and collaborators. Inside of the land, the entire Jewish population was almost wiped out, and many of those would join the resistance to fight up. Many had been sent to Auschwitz and other extermination sites such as Treblinka, and there were mass deportations. But as mentioned, the Greek resistance did form, and the groups would launch a different campaign of attacks against the occupiers and collaborators, they would establish espionage and spy networks to keep an eye on enemy forces. The Greek resistance itself claimed that they killed over 21,000 Axis soldiers and also captured over 6,000 at a cost of around 20,000 partisan fighters' lives. Many groups fought in the mountains where locals had great knowledge over their enemies and inside of the cities the resistance groups worked with other allied forces to coordinate. Working in urban environments was very dangerous for the resistance, and many faced the threat of arrest and torture at the hands of the Gestapo and Abwehr, but also then execution. Iro Konstantopoulou was involved in early 1944 in successful resistance operations, and one in particular caused a huge amount of devastation, as she and her network blew up a train carrying German ammunition. She was at the time a high school student, but there were a number of collaborators working inside the country, who were more than willing to tell the Germans about who the resistance were, and some of these collaborators would be given cash rewards to incentivise the roundup of resistors. One of those who was working as a double agent within the Greek resistance told the German authorities of Iro's identity, and on the very day that it's believed she finished her high school exams that morning, she was rounded up and was arrested 
she travelled home from school by the German forces. Despite being just 17 years old, at the hands of her interrogators, Iro Konstopolu was brutalised and was beaten and tortured by the German forces for information regarding other resistors, but she did not give over any names at all and refused to speak about resistance activities. Further torture came, and Iro, who could actually speak German, would call her interrogators' names and insult them in their own language, which was another form of frustration for the German guards. Many people who would not speak would be regarded by the Germans as a lost cause, and because of this, the majority of them, wherever they were based, were executed for this. After her interrogation and torture, the brave Iro was then sent to the Haidari concentration camp. This was found outside of Athens, and was known as the largest and most notorious concentration camp in Greece, and it was known as the Bastille of Greece. It was a transit camp where prisoners were held here, before they were moved to other camps, and around 21,000 people passed through the site. The camp was brutal in its running, and execution and torture, as well as punishment, occurred daily, and it's believed that 300 people died here from torture that they received in the facility. There were also more executions carried out against the prisoners, if a German soldier had been attacked by the resistance. Prisoners were forced to do hard labour to break their souls, and this was pointless work, such as digging holes and then filling them back in. But there was a huge amount of fear at Haidari. Iro remained here for some time, however she would be one of those prisoners who were executed. On the 5th of September 1944, just over a month before the German occupation of Athens would be over, as the German forces retreated, Iro Konstantopoulou was taken by the camp guards to her execution site. She was not alone, as there were 49 other members of the Greek resistance who had been gathered for their execution that day, and as the camp guards led her to the firing range and execution site, another female resistor, who was executed days later, said, Well done, my Iro. This is how Greek women die. It must have been a terrifying time for her, as she knew death was on the horizon. A German firing squad had been gathered, and these executioners were armed with their weapons, and Iro was led out in front of them. Quickly the order to fire was given, and the 17-year-old girl was killed, but it was reported that the Germans went much further. It's claimed that the Germans brutally littered the body of the young girl with 17 bullets, one for each year of her life, as a warning to other resistance members not to fight against the Germans. It was an incredibly tragic demise and death, for a young woman who believed her calling was to fight against the Germans, like thousands of other Greeks did. Their actions in the resistance were not in vain, but what is equally heartbreaking is that in just over a month after Iro's execution, the Germans left the Greek lands and she would have been spared. It was a ruthless execution, and the Germans inflicted unnecessary cruelty onto Iro's demise as they would fire 17 bullets into her as a statement. It showed the true brutality of the occupation and what would happen to those who rose up and were caught. But Iro Konstantopoulou's story is one that deserves to be remembered. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.